When do you know your marriage is over? Background. My husband, 27M, and I, 26F, have been married for eight years and dated for three years before that. We are high school sweethearts. Each other's firsts. We have three young kids. It's so crazy to think I've been with this man for almost 11 years. In our relationship I've always been the one who loved him more than he loved me. I was crazy in love with him. I couldn't wait to go home to him. I catered to everything and anything he needed. I was so excited when I knew he was going to be home soon. I thought he was the best guy ever. So cute and dorky handsome. Just my type. He was in the Marines from 2014 to 2018. And although he tells such fond stories, these years were so dark for me. He never physically cheated on me but he did some things that I hate. Deep down I hold a grudge against him and am not over it. Fast forward, he's been out the past three years and our marriage is better. Life has come down to a regular routine. I think we've fallen out of love with each other. We don't flirt with each other. Texts are kept to a minimum. When we are home together, we're doing our own thing. When we fight, we don't talk or touch each other for days. It's not even big fights either. I got mad at him last Saturday because I came home after a 12-hour shift to him playing cut all day. And the house a mess. And he knew I was mad and just didn't say anything. So we haven't talked since last Friday. It's Tuesday now. I feel like we're roommates who just have three kids together. He will play COD from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Sleep until noon. Wake up to eat. Take a nap from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And repeat. I can't fucking stand how he does this. It's been years and years of him playing games like this. I want to say he's a good dad but our kids are growing up resenting him. My oldest is only six and she literally said, I don't care if dad plays games all day because when he gets off he just yells at us for no reason anyway. It truly makes me sad that he can't put his damn games down or his phone and spend some quality time with our kids or me. He doesn't see that playing games this long is a problem. I'm just tired of this. I want to be married with someone who's my best friend. I want to be proud of who my husband is. He thinks I'm obsessed with the K-drama type of love and says, it's not real and guys like that don't exist. I just want a real and deep kind of love. Sorry my post is so long. I am probably overthinking but I'm just tired. I feel like I'm wasting time with him. I fantasize about re-entering the dating scene and meeting new people. But the thought of him meeting and being with other women hurts me. However, that's to be expected after being with him for 11 years, right? I want more kids in the future, dot, but I don't want him to be the dad. If he would shape up and try to bring our marriage back to life, then I would stay and try to make things work. But our marriage has been dead for years now. He says it's about the kids now. I can't live like this anymore. I go to bed alone so lonely and sad. No. You're not obsessed with anything other than wanting a normal healthy relationship and a functioning partner who contributes to the life and littles he helped create. I'd leave, pack the kids up and go to my parents. Maybe that will be a wake-up call. And I would legit leave in the middle of the house being a disaster. Let it sink in. And if he doesn't have alarm bells going off. If he doesn't realize something is wrong because you left with the kids. That's your answer and it means you need to move on. Please listen to yourself. You're young and you have your whole life ahead of you to explore. Don't let this man be an anchor to you. He will drag you down into his misery forever. Just go. I'm speaking from experience. You'll blink your eyes and 10 more years will have passed and it will be the same. If not worse, go while you can. Find yourself. Enjoy your life. Free yourself from this man who is just a burden and doesn't add anything positive to your life. If you have to ask, it's already over. I'm divorced. We did not have kids and that made it easy. I don't know what you went through a couple years ago. 
But video games may be a self-medicating for PTSD or something else he's trying to ignore. If you want to save it, your best bet is to try to get him into therapy. If he refuses, then hire a divorce lawyer. It will be worth it to have the DL. Trust me, even in a simple divorce, I got screwed over on alimony. But it doesn't matter. Please hire one. When he gets served with papers and suddenly wants to rectify everything or talk or go to therapy, only do it if you really want to. If he pushed you all the way there before he decided there was a problem, that's a problem you may not want to deal with. Either way, your life story has you in the center and you need to make it the life you want to live. If you want more kids, pick someone who is interested and suitable and will treat your kids like their own DNA. Also get into family therapy at that point. It can really help the kids transition. Whatever the case and whatever happens. Now you know what to avoid going forward. And you deserve happiness, as do your kids. Take care and I'm sorry you've hit the breaking point. You need marriage counseling. You are not communicating. If you do not find a way to reach each other, it is over. Realize that he's not the problem you need to focus on. He has to focus on him. You need to focus on you. Your post focuses on his shortcomings, but I promise you, he has reasons for withdrawing. He's avoiding. The question is, what is he avoiding? Individual counseling and marriage counseling. I was like, all right, this might be salvageable until I got about halfway through your post. For a lot of people, love changes over time. You get more comfortable. It gets less thrilling. But this doesn't always happen, and it doesn't have to be negative. Comfort isn't synonymous with death of a relationship. If his behavior is bad enough that your children are noticing it, and you're at the point where you're saying you can't live like this, we are in rough waters. Your chance to work on this was years ago before the resentment and anger on both sides reached this level. Therapy might fix all of this, but it's gonna be an uphill battle. I see what you're saying about wanting more children, and I don't mean to scare you away from the life you want. But the reality is that a single woman with three children is gonna have a tougher time of finding another partner who not only wants to take on her children but have more. That's absolutely no reason to stay and is not a reflection of you. But it will be another hurdle if you take that path. I'd literally put all of my effort into rebuilding my family, whatever that looks like for you. But he has to be on the same page. If he won't fight for his family, this is already over. This doesn't sound like it ever was an equal relationship. It's just that you were exhausted and arrived in reality because of it. Congrats to you, husband, who has found a woman to carry his ass for 11 years and wore rose-colored glasses glued to her face. Congrats to you that you woke up. This won't change. You got what you bought. I'd try therapy first life is too short to be miserable. But finding the right partner is too hard to throw in the towel on something that might be fixable. I think if you don't work on it and give this every opportunity to succeed, you'll regret it. It still might not work. But if it comes to that, You'll know in your heart you tried your hardest and it couldn't be saved. That will mean a lot to you down the road. If I were in your shoes, I'd organize marriage counseling and put some effort into it. If you won't participate, then you can at least leave knowing you did what you could do on your end. Divorce isn't glamorous. You will be co-parenting with this man for the rest of your life. You will likely have to deal with your kids not being with you up to half the time. Custody is getting more fair for fathers finally. Kids being around the other woman when he repartners, etc. You won't have the same resources being single income versus dual income. You'll take a step down in your way of living, dating and having fun. You've got three kids and you're 26. That ship has largely sailed. Most people your age are looking to start a life with a blank slate partner. 
not take on three kids. And even if you leave now, by the time you remarry, assuming you prioritize your kids, take your time, etc. You're pushing it on age to have more kids with someone else. You guys married young. You've grown apart. Therapy. The grass is not always greener on the other side and being a single parent is hard. I'm sorry. But he cannot say that your marriage is about the kids now. And then not spend any time with them, contribute to their care. The marriage is about him using you as a crutch so that he doesn't have to get off his ass and do anything with his time. He's not going to change. You're unhappy. And not in a short term. We'll get over this little life hump kind of way. He's been behaving this way for years. You're not even living like roommates. As even they share equal responsibilities, he's living like an extra child who you have no control over. Yes. It might be difficult seeing him with another woman when you leave your childhood sweethearts and you've never really known anything different than your relationship with him. But it'll hurt a hell of a lot less to see him with someone new than it'll hurt in 10 years time if you're still with him. And look back and realize you've wasted all that time and potential happiness on a relationship that's dead in the water. I kind of have a feeling this wasn't to ask anyone in particular. Just someone who had to write it out. So I will just say this. Your feelings are justified. And maybe it is best to move on to find your next adventure. Good luck. Quote dot dot. Our marriage has been dead for years now. He says it's about the kids now. I can't live like this anymore. I go to bed alone so lonely and sad. If you want something different you will have to do something different. In all honesty almost no one meets their soulmate at age 15 and spends the next 60 to 70 years living happily ever after. Most teenagers have yet to figure out who they're let alone or what trait they want and need in a mate for life. When it comes to love and relationships most of us fail our way to success. Very few people hit a home run their first second, third or fourth time up at bat. If this were not the case we would all be married to our high school sweethearts. Our teenage and early 20s are usually for the most part a period of discovery, exploring, and learning. Those relationships usually end up being practice relationships. With each failed relationship, heartache, or betrayal we are presented with an opportunity to either craft or refine our mate selection, screening process and must-haves list for choosing our next mate. That's generally how it goes for the majority of people. It sounds like you never had the chance to be a single adult woman with her own apartment or living with a girlfriend where you were free to date different types of men to learn what actually suits you. What made for an ideal mate at age 15 isn't likely going to cut it for you at age 20, 25, 30 or beyond. Our must-haves list tend to evolve with life experience. There are two basic types of people when it comes to long-term relationships and marriage. One is called the practical and the other is the romantic. The so-called practical person believes it's normal and should be expected for romance and passion to wither on the vine with the passage of time. The romantic person believes their love will grow deeper and passion will intensify with the benefit of knowing each other better and how to please them. If two romantics or two practical people end up together they would be in heaven. The reason why it doesn't happen very often is because practical people behave like romantics. At the start of new relationships during the infatuation honeymoon phase. By the time a romantic learns their partner isn't the same as them they are emotionally invested. They keep hoping there is a way for them to get their mate to go back to the way it used to be. The reality is that was not their authentic self. They just behaved that way to win you over. In our relationship I've always been the one who loved him more than he loved me. 
Quote dot, the thought of him meeting and being with other women hurts me. The person who is the most emotionally invested in the relationship always gets hurt the most when it's over even if they are the one who ended it. Whether you like it or not leaving will cause you some short-term pain and the fact you have children together means you probably will never be completely free of him as you co-parent. Life is a personal journey and at the end of the day if he won't put in the effort to improve the marriage you have to decide if it's a deal breaker. Raising children in a loveless marriage isn't doing them any favors. No one is stuck with anyone. Suffering is optional. The goal of marriage is to have a soulmate, not a cellmate. Never love anyone who treats you like you're ordinary. Oscar Wilde. Best wishes. Sounds like a separation is in order. He needs to be without the kids and you for a while. He might even need professional help. I've been in your shoes. Although replace kids with cats. Got together as teenagers. Had some good years together. But I grew up and he didn't. Or grew in a different direction as me. I loved the potential person I saw he could be. But that wasn't who he actually was and he didn't want to change. I loved our history together and the labels our relationship had. But I did not like the future I saw going forwards with him. I loved him as one loves a friend who they've shared half their life with. But I didn't want him as my life partner. It was really hard to finally acknowledge that I was not happy with the person he was. And he had no interest in changing. So I could either keep my labels and be unhappy or I could end thing and attempt to find happiness. Elsewhere. I decided to end things finally after 15 years together when I was in my early 30s. And it's the best decision I ever made. It was very tough at first as all I knew was life with him. And I had to deal with saying goodbye to my old dreams and that chapter of my life. But I never once regretted it. I felt lighter almost immediately. And as time passed it got easier. That was over two years ago and I'm so much happier now. I'm still active with this Reddit account that I made when going through that breakup because I keep seeing people with stories like mine. They got together young, grew in different direction, and now unhappy but don't know if they should leave or not. My advice is if you are unhappy and there is no desire to change on the part of your partner, then don't be afraid to leave. You don't need to spend the rest of your life validating a decision you made as a teenager. Set the example for your kids that they do not have to spend their life unhappy because of a mistake they made young. You only get one future. And you're allowed to be selfish with it. Honestly, I would just get a divorce. I don't agree with the comments about getting marriage counseling. The relationship sounds as if it's dead. He's lazy, dysfunctional, and verbally abuses your kids. You can't get over your resentment towards him. You can't counsel love back into a relationship. Marriage counseling only works when the two still love each other. Equally, it sounds like the relationship was doomed from the beginning. Since he doesn't love you as much as you love him. Difficult will be difficult since you bit have kids. But it's better than what you've got going on. This is unfortunately what happens with these high school sweetheart relationships most of the time. You grow a lot and sometimes you grow out of each other. If that makes sense. I mean, you can try marriage counseling if you're that desperate to make it well. But if he says no, just get a divorce. I think you already know the answer. You've gotta go. I feel for you. I have been married for over 20 plus years. I have three boys and my marriage really got into a complacent relationship. Job was draining being the only one working and then coming home to a loud house of kids. I mostly sat on my computer and watched mind numbing videos to relax and have a few beers. Did this for the next 11 years until recently. Watching some Reddit videos and seeing other marriages fall apart in the most heinous ways made me 
see where I was in my relationship. Since the beginning of this year I have been putting effort into rekindling my relationship and showing more affection to my wife. This has been a huge boost but also scared her cause the sudden change. Yes, we also argued just like that about petty things and not talk for days. But in the end, I wish that I had gone to counseling when this all started so I would be able to see where I became complacent. Your hubby may have some PTSD from being in the military and combined with daily stress has become complacent. Try marriage counseling it may just snap them out of it. This took me 11 years to figure it out. I hear your every point. From the anger over little things to wanting to find someone who appreciates me, loving me and being my best friend. I've been with my husband nine years now. He works, and I'm a psalm, when he's home. It's his cell phone versus games. However, he is a pretty decent father, playing with the kids and generally keeping them entertained. But he isn't a good partner in terms of being married. I love him, but I don't feel that actual connection to, with him anymore. He isn't my best friend. Nad we barely talk. When we do. I'm always quick to anger and he always says stupid things. On top of just saying things whenever. Example I mentioned my hair was growing out from the dye job I did last month and he sarcastically. Said it's just showing your true colors. Which whatever. But it was the tone he took. Versus being funny about it. I'm at a loss on what to do myself. For your relationship. It sounds like you're done. I'm seeking therapist help. So maybe that's an option for you as well? I'm sorry to read this. But your story is all too common. I don't know why video games have such a negative influence. Especially on young men. But they do. And that's not the even the real problem, it's his escape from you and your family that has caused a serious rift. I want to encourage you to get family therapy. But the realistic side of me says that this may be too little too late. You are still young enough to start again and even have more children if you want. Beyond this, I don't know what to say. Except that you deserve the very best. And I hope you find it been there done all of that. Do yourself and him a favor and leave. I wish I had done it earlier myself. You can try counseling. But it seems that this is over. If you want a better life you will have to make it elsewhere. It may be that getting dumped will force him to take stock of what he is doing and change course. But it is unlikely he will do that otherwise. Well, I felt like I wrote this. We have tried counseling and it did nothing. Two years of it and nothing is working. We just stopped marriage counseling and don't know what to do anymore. Wish I could offer more advice. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aircast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.